Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our clinical biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about glycogen storage diseases. We talked about the uncouplers of oxidative phosphorylation. We talked about galactosemia and lactose intolerance, reducing sugars in your urine, as well as sorbitol and its effect on cataract. Today, it's time for insulinoma. What does OMA mean? A tumor, a mass. Mass made of what? Made of insulin secreting cells. What are the cells that secrete insulin? The beta cells of the pancreas in the islets of Langerhans. That's why insulinoma is considered an islet cell tumor. What are the islet cell tumors? We have insulinoma, which secretes too much insulin. Glucagonoma, which secretes too much glucagon. Somatostatinoma, which secretes too much somatostatin. VIPOMA, which secretes too much VIP, vasoactive intestinal peptide. And lastly, we have gastrinoma, which secretes too much gastrin. All of these five tumors can arise from your pancreas. Why is this guy sweating so hard? Because this is part of the Whipple triad, not to be confused with the Whipple procedure. Because we talked about insulin before in great detail in my physiology playlist, today we'll just review it very quickly. Insulin comes from the endocrine pancreas, not the exocrine. Which part of the endocrine pancreas? The beta cells, the central ones. What are these? All of these are the islets of Langerhans. Pancreas has two parts, exocrine pancreas, which has a duct, which secretes enzymes into the duodenum, versus endocrine, the islets of Langerhans. They do not have ducts, instead they are ductless. They do not give their secretions to the gut, instead they dump their hormones into the bloodstream. Their secretions are not enzymes, their secretions are hormones. Glucagon hormone from the alpha cell, insulin from the beta cell, and somatostatin, the doofus, from the delta cell. Why do you call it doofus? Because it's a universal inhibitor. It inhibits everything. It inhibits glucagon secretion, insulin secretion, it even inhibits its own secretion. Just think about that. Exocrine pancreas, digestive enzymes versus endocrine pancreas, hormones. Islet cell tumors will include insulinoma, glucagonoma, somatostatinoma, VIPoma, and gastrinoma. Normally, alpha cells make glucagon, beta cells make insulin and amylin, by the way. Delta cells make somatostatin. Did you know about the PP cells in the pancreas? Pancreatic polypeptide. What does insulin do? It lowers your blood sugar by pushing the glucose into the cell and away from the bloodstream. And therefore, patients with insulinoma will secrete too much insulin and will have hypoglycemia. That's why I'm sweating. Insulin is the hero of the feeding state, not the fasting state. Insulin land is the land of abundance. Almost every other hormone is the land of scarcity. What do you mean by almost every other hormone? I'm talking about glucagon, cortisol, epinephrine, and to a certain extent, thyroxine. Insulin is anabolic. It's a builder because we are in the feeding state. Oh, we are in the land of abundance. Let's build amino acids into proteins. Let's build up glucose into glycogen and build up free fatty acids into triglycerides. How about breaking down stuff and getting like ketone bodies? Oh, shut up. Insulin is the major anti-ketogenic hormone. Does insulin want me to build muscle? Yes, insulin wants you to build muscle. It's protein anabolic. Who else is protein anabolic? If you say growth hormone, you are absolutely correct. And that's why there is synergism between insulin and growth hormone. What does synergism mean? It means 1 plus 1 equals 3, which is a mathematical insanity, but a physiological reality. Who secretes insulin? The beta cells of the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas. To learn about the mechanism of insulin secretion, please refer to my physiology playlist. You can find this mechanism in my endocrinology playlist as well. The moment the beta cell of your pancreas makes insulin, it has to make C-peptide with it. How come? Because insulin started as pre-pro-insulin. Then we took a piece of it to make it more active and it becomes this just pro-insulin, which is a shorter, smaller molecule, a shorter polypeptide chain. And then what? This pro-insulin will be cleaved again. Oh, it will become shorter? Absolutely. 
and then it will give you insulin and C-peptide. So anytime pro-insulin is broken down, it has to give you insulin with C-peptide together, which means the natural insulin that you make is made simultaneously with C-peptide. What does the C stand for? Connecting peptide. Okay, medicosis, I secreted the insulin from the beta cell of the pancreas. How would this insulin function? It will act on insulin receptor. What type of receptor are we talking? It's a receptor tyrosine kinase. Insulin was secreted by the pancreas. Now insulin will act on the receptor on the target cell. What's the target cell? Usually adipose tissue or skeletal muscle. What's the name of the receptor? Tyrosine kinase or receptor tyrosine kinase. To learn about the specifics and how exactly it functions, please refer to my endocrinology playlist. Insulin got secreted from the beta cell of the pancreas. Insulin will act on the target cell via the insulin receptor. Once it acts on the target cell, it will tell that cell, hey, open your mouth, GLUT4, and take that glucose in. Where's that glucose coming from? From the bloodstream. So what's going to happen to the glucose in my blood? It decreases. And what's going to happen to the glucose in my cell? It will go up. So when insulin is working, blood glucose goes down. Yes, what do you call that? Hypoglycemia low blood sugar. Here are the islet cell tumors. Do not forget to add VIPoma here. And by the way, insulinoma is the most common islet cell tumor. The famous Whipple triad of hypoglycemia. What's that? If you have low blood sugar, if it is severe enough, it can lead to sweating dizziness tachycardia. And this is due to low sugar. So it's more likely to happen when you're fasting and to improve when you eat. Because when you take in so much glucose, you will correct the hypoglycemia. On physical exam, this fasting hypoglycemia can cause mental status abnormalities. Have you ever heard of hypoglycemic coma? How can I diagnose this disease? Well, decreased serum glucose. It's called hypoglycemia, especially fasting hypoglycemia. And this is very important. Increase serum insulin and increase serum C-peptide. And this is very important because some people will be taking insulin from outside called surreptitious use of insulin. This insulin abuse can lead to fasting hypoglycemia with elevated serum insulin, but their C-peptide will be normal if not low because their artificially induced hypoglycemia inhibits the beta cell of the pancreas, which means the natural beta cells of the pancreas will make less of the natural insulin and less of the natural C-peptide. So the patient comes in with fasting hypoglycemia. How can I differentiate between an insulinoma and surreptitious insulin use. In insulinoma, there is fasting hypoglycemia, elevated serum insulin, and elevated serum C-peptide. In surreptitious use or abuse of insulin, you'll find fasting hypoglycemia, increased insulin, this one is exogenous, and normal or low C-peptide in the serum. Also, since this is a tumor in the pancreas, you can see it on CT scan, usually with contrast. Management of any tumor, remove it. And how do I decrease insulin release? Octreotide, which is an analog of the Dufus somatostatin. It's a universal inhibitor. It inhibits everything. It inhibits insulin secretion. It inhibits glucagon secretion. It even inhibits its own secretion. Some high yield facts for your exam. Is insulinoma benign or malignant? Answer, it's benign. You want a mnemonic? Insulin is from the beta cell. So, benign. Next, do not forget that about 80% of patients with insulinoma also have MEN1 with it. Multiple endocrine neoplasia 1. It was the disease of the three Ps. Pancreas, pituitary, and parathyroid. How can I tell the difference between insulinoma and exogenous surreptitious insulin abuse? C-peptide. If it's high, insulinoma. If it's low or normal, exogenous insulin use. Next question. How can I tell the difference between a patient with insulinoma, a tumor in the pancreas, and a patient abusing not insulin but sulfonylurea? How do sulfonylureas work? They are insulin secretagogues. They tell the pancreas to secrete its natural insulin. Now that's a more tricky situation. You can do two things. Urine sulfonylurea panel, but usually not very accurate. The most accurate is the spectrophotometry or radio amino assay. This basically is a study that follows up the pancreas to see exactly where the insulin is coming from 
and why it is coming. Is it responding to the good old glucose or is it also responding to sulfonylurea? So let's look at my C-peptide level in my plasma. If it's normal, this could be normal people or exogenous insulin use. If it's high, this is a patient with insulinoma or taking an insulin secreta GOGA. By the way, exogenous insulin use can also have low plasma C-peptide. What else can have low plasma C-peptide level? How about good old type 1 diabetes? This pancreas is screwed, cannot make insulin. If it cannot make insulin, it probably cannot make C-peptide as well. Quiz time! Can you answer this question? Here is your serum glucose. That's you, normal you with your normal pancreas. Now, I will remove your pancreas, i.e. you will be depancreatized. What do you think is going to happen to your serum glucose? Will it get higher or lower than before? How about your serum free fatty acids after I remove your pancreas? How about your serum acetoacetic acid? Will it go up or down after I remove your pancreas? Please let me know the answers to these questions in the comment section. You'll find the answer key in the next video titled Glucagonoma. To learn more about insulin, the different types of insulin, the doses of insulin, the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes, diabetic ketoacidosis, many other hormones, and much more, download my endocrine pharmacology course at medicosisperfectsnellis.com. To learn about the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, the titratable acidity, the story of urea, and much more, download my renal physiology course at medicosisperfectsnellis.com. If you do not want to download my courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the Join button and choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos. Please subscribe and hit the bell, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Nanos, where medicine makes perfect sense.